Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing an anomaly. Something that you would not expect to be done so well by the company that's done it. The iFi Aurora. This compact stereo hi-fi piece is designed and built by a company that you would normally associate with little desktop audio solutions like a Zen Blue Bluetooth receiver or a headphone amplifier or, or some other little thing. Not a big stereo. Although, let's be honest, it's a compact stereo. This is the iFi Aurora. This beautiful piece, this mini system, is designed for a modern streaming world. Quite iconic in its design, the use of bamboo, curved sides, all sorts of things are not only introducing a design and element to it, but also a quality set. Cabinet residence is difficult for most manufacturers to manage. Well, bamboo and the fact that it's a composite or uh, uh, heavy weight design means that re resonance is naturally, um, naturally managed. Nevertheless, this little modern streamer of a stereo sounds astonishing, and it's got some awesome little features. So, firstly, the packaging. As you can see, kind of muted on most sides until it, you know, there's your photograph of the Aurora. Tilting it forward, it starts to give a hint of what's going on. And before I go any further, just over here is where you'll find the serial number. This is designed for the Australian and New Zealand market, and a tiny little scan code for its serial number. It has a lovely uh, line drawing of the unit itself, and it's starting to give you an implication of what is inside. It's also starting to give you an implication of the very generous feature set that this product has. It is designed for streaming people, but people who are interested in higher end quality of sound. It introduces Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with all of the latest Bluetooth standards now incorporated, including 5.0. It's an AirPlay device, it's a DLNA, it's a high-res audio streamer, it'll exceed that of CD quality. It has a few other things, including art, um, active, it's, they have bass management. And, as you will see, a, a feature set as far as inputs and outputs like nothing else in its class, and certainly like nothing else for its price. Let's have a look. So, opening it's really easy. Pull tabs. No need for a craft knife. Big slab of cardboard. Gets us in to the accessories. It has a New Zealand, it's white, a New Zealand IEC power cord, it's earthed. It has a little remote control, reminds me a little bit of perhaps of uh, Apple, uh, Apple TV remote. It's elegant and an aluminium. It also has a series of little plastic nubbins. Now I'm going to open that so we can have a wee look and put them aside. These are kind of important and you'll see uh, later when we explore this product why. Again there's its remote. Lovely look and feel for a small remote control. It's got one of those little um, uh, pen like batteries in it. Multiple functions available from it, including inputs, play, pause, and volume up and down. It's got um, the iFi uh, brochure, well, user manual, I should say, a little bit of a warranty card with some QR codes, uh, and basic setup guide included. The next layer is just a big slab of polystyrene, moulded beautifully to the product size and shape. So we forward, again we get to start to see some of the elements of design. Next stage is literally just lift it out, and this is where you get a real impression of its size and weight. It's very, very heavy. Pack it in. Implied from its line drawing is um, the sort of architectural theme that this product has. Opening it from its plastic bag at this point is relatively straightforward, folding it down, and we get rid of the desiccant bag, and then carefully lift the unit out. Many of the design elements are immediately obvious when we have a look at it for the first time. Um, the unit is suspended with a series of aluminium joints 
These can be covered off with the rubber stoppers to ensure that you don't damage anything that it might sit on. Uh, there's enough for the base. The reason that it actually sits up is what I'll touch on a little bit later, and it relates to the base management of a product like this. But, pausing and looking at its style, you, you get um, the illusion, I guess, that this is a lot smaller than perhaps it is. This, um, the texturing effect uh, makes, it means that it sort of breaks it up visually and it doesn't look as intrusive as something that's very solid. Uh, hidden in behind here is uh, two tweeters and four mid-range drivers. And then underneath, as we pause for a moment, um, there are these sort of oval passive radiators. The, the use of the passive radiator means that the unit can produce some prestigious amount of sound and bass from a very, very compact unit, yet not be flustered at any time. The unit has a lovely front display, and please hang around for all of the close-ups. I'll try and take some in to get the lighting right so you can see some of the drive units that they have, but also how the touch screen and other things is utilised. There's a wonderful display, very easy to see across the room, but not too intrusive as far as the colour scheme that it chooses. Input selection and other things like that are all from the front, and it's all touch sensitive. Spinning it around, you'll see a couple of elements as far as the next drive units. This is to, to give you the illusion of very, very uh, large stereo sound from something relatively compact. Spinning it around, you see some very unusual features, and these are the ones I want to highlight. This sort of, and again, hang around for the photographs. It's these sort of aluminium extrusions. And, if we see here, a couple of other unusual black dots. Spinning it around so you can have a wee look, and please hang around for the photographs. What happens is that this unit goes into a setup, and it uses these to bounce uh, a laser calibration off walls to sense where it is in the room, and equalize and manage the base response appropriately. It's absolutely unique to anything in its price, and it means that the bass, if it's in a corner or up against a wall, is never going to sound boomy or bloated. It's an amazing feature set and beautifully well thought out. Again, looking at the back, we see numerous inputs and outputs. Uh, covered off with little rubber caps, we have got a left and right traditional analog input, supported by a 3.5mm, both an auxiliary. If I understand correctly, if you plug in the 3.5, it deactivates the other um, RCA input. You've got a coaxial digital, an optical digital with a classic sort of uh, plastic cap to protect it. You've got um, a network input for wired uh, LAN connections, um, USB, and again, very unique to anything in its price an SD card specifically to manage and play music directly off the unit rather than having to uh, use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. There's also the uh, DC input uh, for 12 volts should you have an alternative power supply requirement and the main IEC input. So that feature set is amazing to see in something of this price and quality. Again, an SD card specific for playback, USB for the ability to have some larger files. It is awesome to see that this product can work not only wirelessly via AirPlay, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but also has its own media playback for music as well. Again, you'll see the design, and I'll tilt it forward to see the aluminium extrusion, well, the aluminium handles and things like that, that give this beautiful product a hint of sort of architectural elegance. So there we have it. The iFi Aurora, the all-in-one compact stereo system, unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.